Stay all day up. Now tuned in to the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there even when the success you've expected to achieve is yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. That's the go-getter energy that moves me, you, and anyone else out there to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. We put all this together into one bundle, one mindset, one method, one philosophy, one book, one show. This masterclass you're listening to right now that is called Work On Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. Today's topic, the three aspects of winning. There are three necessary elements, let's just say, when it comes to your competitions. If we're talking about winning, then there's some competition you're going to be going up against. And I'm talking about, today specifically, I'm talking about external competition, meaning other people entities that you're going to have to go against and beat them out in order to get a victory in any zero sum game and not all games are zero sum games but some of them are for example sports is a zero sum game everybody cannot win the championship everybody can't make the all-star game everybody can't score every basket every game one team's gonna win one team's gonna lose that's what i'm talking about here today three aspects of winning when you're in direct competition because if you're going to play the game i would suggest you probably not suggest but i would assume that you probably want to win that game. And in life, you need to keep in mind always that it is the winners who get remembered. History books are written by the people who win. All right, the losers, they're not around to tell their story. So you need to keep this in mind at all times and, and the things that you're going through and the things that you're doing, the, these three specific aspects of winning. And I'll break down exactly what I mean by that. You need to know what all three of these are, which I'll tell you, of course, for to keep in mind for competitive purposes. Again, all life is a competition. When I was going into my uh, sophomore year of college, I remember the coach, I was speaking to him in the summertime, and he was telling me, well, let me tell you what you should expect when you get here in August, because that's usually when school starts around August, at least in the United States, most colleges and universities. So I was talking to him probably in early August, a few weeks before school started. And he said, look, when you get here, you know, all the players, the returning players and the players from campus from the year before who just like playing basketball and all the recruited guys, everybody's going to come to the gym and everybody's going to want to play pickup. And he said, what you should expect is that the returning players are going to want to make sure they're establishing to everybody else, hey, we're the basketball team, we're the guys who were on this team last year. Then the new guys are going to be coming in, like especially the players like you, Dre, who were recruited. You're coming in with the mindset of, look, I was recruited, you know, which means I'm good and I'm here and I want to make sure everybody knows who I am and what I'm doing and you got to be ready to go out there and compete. He told me this, you know, again, this is before practice doesn't start till like mid-October. So this is like three months before we're even going to be practicing before he could even do any type of supervision. He was like, you got to be ready to come out here and compete. And I already had that in mind, but this is something that, you know, sometimes I get players asking me, Dre, what should I expect when I go to play on a basketball team somewhere? Well, you should expect to play basketball. You should expect that you're going to have to compete. You got to expect that you got to earn the job. And I'm going to tell you the three elements that you're going to need in order to do that as best you possibly can. Not only earn the job, but keep a job. Anything that you're doing, again, in zero-sum competitions, of which there are many in life. Point number one, topic once again today, the three aspects of winning in life. Number one, 50% of the game is showing up. So I'm breaking this down out of 100% of a pie of 100% of winning in life. 50% of the pie is you just got to show up. In other words, be in the room where things are happening. If you just do that, that's half the job. All right, half of your success is just being in the right place at the time that you're supposed to be there. Well, I'm not even call it the right time. Because see, when I say the right place at the right time, that kind of sounds like luck or happenstance. I'm not talking luck or happenstance here. I'm talking you just being where you're supposed to be and knowing that you're supposed to be there, just showing up over and over again, showing up. All right, you got a job. You might be the lowest person on the totem pole. You don't know anything. You're new. You haven't accomplished anything. You got the smallest resume of anybody at the job. All you got to do is just keep showing up to the job. Eventually, you're going to learn some things. Eventually, you'll achieve some things. Eventually, you'll start moving up the totem pole. You'll start moving up the hierarchy if you continue to show up. In college, all you got to do is go to class, right? I had many professors in college. And any of you who's in college or has been to college, you probably had this experience where the professor would say something like, look, half of your grade in this class is just showing up to class. If you come to every single class that we have this semester, 
you're guaranteed to get nothing worse than a, a C. I've had professors say that. The lowest grade you can earn in this class is a C if you come to every single class. Now, if you don't come to every single class, then your grade is based on you know, how you perform on the tests and the quizzes and the projects and things like that. But if you just come to every class, you could be the dumbest person on campus. You come to every class and do everything you're supposed to do, turn in the assignments. You're just here every time we have class, which is usually what, twice or three times a, a week for how many months? Four months? You're guaranteed a C grade. All right, so if all the teachers were like this, you could get a guaranteed college degree with a, a 2.0, I guess, GPA by just showing up to every single class. And you know what's crazy? Very rarely, it, well, I would say, I don't, I'm not a college professor. I had to ask a professor who has this rule, what their, what their, uh, the numbers are like with this. But I would estimate that, mm, I would say maybe 60% on average is the number of students who actually take advantage of that offer and show up to every class and get that guaranteed C just by showing up to every class. And here's what's funny usually, the students who show up to every class, they're the ones who don't need the guaranteed C because usually they're pretty good. And the reason that they're pretty good is because they're showing up every day and they're getting the knowledge, they're getting the information. Because they're there, they might as well do something while they're there, which means they take notes, they study, they know what's going on because they're listening to the lectures and the information and whatever it is is being shared with them. So when it's time for the tests and the quizzes and the projects, they're actually pretty good at it. They don't need the guaranteed C to get the guaranteed C. All right, they're usually getting B's and A's because they come in every class. And the people who are getting the B's and A's are the people who come to every class. So it works both ways. People who are good are the people who are showing up all the time. The people who are showing up all the time are usually the people who are good. All you gotta do is show up consistently. And again, that's half the battle. In high school, my one year playing varsity basketball, our coach said at the beginning of the year, once he named the basketball team, he was telling us how things are gonna go. He said, practice is every day. Every day after school, because our school day ended at like 2.55 p.m., he said practice is at 3 o'clock. So as soon as school ends, as soon as your last period class ends, come to the gym, get dressed, get on the court, and be ready to practice. That was the rule every day. Now, of course, us being high school students, somebody asked, asked the logical question. Well, coach, and he said, uh, and let me tell the rest of the story. He said practice every day. He said if you miss a practice, you're off the team. Do not miss any practice. If anybody misses a practice, you are no longer on the basketball team. And of course, us being smart high school students, somebody asked the logical question, well, coach, what if you're sick and you miss a day of school, therefore you're not at school to be at basketball practice? What then? And the coach said, don't get sick. And let me tell you something. Now, while you might think that's no, uh, you might think that's impossible or how does that make sense or how is that fair? You know, somebody could get sick. Anything could happen to a person. Let me tell you what happened that year on the basketball team. How many people you think got sick? How many people you think missed the practice? How many people do you think got kicked off the basketball team because they were not at practice at three o'clock after school? You probably got it right. The answer is zero. Nobody missed the day. Why? because the job was to show up every day. When the coach said your status on this team is tied to whether or not you show up every day, guess what? Everybody found a reason to show up every day. Nobody missed a single day of practice that entire year. Kobe Bryant, uh, before he passed away, he was coaching his young daughter, his, her basketball team. I remember when she was in the 10 to 12 year old range and I heard an interview that Kobe was doing. He was talking about coaching these young girls and someone asked him, Kobe, how often do you have the girls practice? And Kobe said, every day. We practice every single day because this is, what they, this is how they're gonna learn. They're gonna learn faster by going in here and immersing themselves and practicing every single day. He didn't go into a deeper explanation of it, but I'm giving you all these examples for you to understand that showing up, again, half the job. How often do you do your own thing? Your thing, whatever that thing is that you're serious about, the things that are important to you. Like we talked about in yesterday's master class, how often are you doing it? Are you showing up every single day? Every time that something's happening, are you there? Are you showing up consistently? Does everybody know? Does anyone else know what they can expect from you? Does everybody else know that they can expect you to show up every single time?
or do you have to tell them? See, if you got to tell them, then you're probably not showing up every time. If you're showing up every time, everybody knows you're showing up every time. That means if you were to miss a day, people would be wondering what the hell happened. What's wrong with you? You know, why do people run marathons? If we got any marathon runners listening to this, let me ask that question. Why do people do that? Even if you don't, why do you think people run marathons? Now, aside from the people who are professional runners and they do it like competitively and winning money and stuff like that, trying to win trophies and compete in the Olympics and international competition, aside from those people, and that's a very small percentage of people who run marathons, why does everybody else who's in a marathon, why do they run? And those of y'all who don't know, those distance races, these road races that people get in, you know that you don't get paid to run those races. You pay. Uh, when you see the, the New York City Marathon, the Boston Marathon, the Miami Marathon, the Paris Marathon, the London Marathon, all these big cities and plenty of places, uh, hundreds of thousands of places in the world who have marathon races, the runners who run and race, they pay money to enter the race. Right? They don't get paid, they pay. So why do people sign up, pay money, do all this training, you know, get up in the morning, it's usually the weather is not always so nice, usually the marathons happen in the falls and the winters because it's less humid in all these different places why do people pay money do all that training just to beat their bodies up for 26.2 miles and running a marathon again they're not getting paid for it they're not going to get any you no know, any worldwide acclaim for doing it they might get some likes on a post when they post a picture of themselves and tell the inspirational story in the caption of why they ran a marathon but why else do people run marathons you know why because people want to finish, people want to prove that we can finish what we start. We want to prove that we can start a race at mile zero and go through 26.2 miles without stopping, without giving up and finishing. Now again, when I say without stopping, that means finishing the race. So I don't care if it takes you six hours, seven hours, five hours, four hours, three hours, or however long it takes you, but you started it and you finished it that day. That's what, that's what running a marathon is about too. I would say 95% of people who enter marathons is just to say that you finished it or a half marathon or a 5K or whatever the level is for you. It's not because we're trying to win a trophy because you're probably not going to win it or win a medal. You're probably not going to or get in an international competition. 99.9% .9 chance that ain't you. It's just to prove that we can show up and complete something every day. 50% of the job, ladies and gentlemen. When I was trying to get good at basketball as a young teen who didn't know anything, didn't have a YouTube to follow, no Instagrammers, no programs, no coaches, no trainers, nobody taking me under their wing, what did I do? I mean, you've heard me tell the story before. You read my book, Work On Your Game. If you haven't, go to workonyourgamebook.com, get the book and the bonuses. What did I do? I just showed up every day. I just showed up to the court every day and practiced by myself, not knowing how to practice, not knowing what to practice, not knowing if my practice was making sense or if I was doing, quote, the right thing, close quote, or not. I just kept showing up every single day and eventually some stuff started working. Not everything worked, but some stuff started working. I just kept doing more of the stuff that worked, less of the stuff that didn't. Again, nobody had to teach me this formula. I just understood it inherently. I kept doing that. I had to rinse, repeat, and eventually I became a good basketball player. Showing up every single day. There are a lot of people who play musical instruments and they learned to play by ear. They didn't learn to read the music. They, don't, they couldn't read notes off some sheet music. If you, charge, if you gave them money to do it, they couldn't do it. They learned to play by ear. How did they do that? Now, of course, maybe they had some natural talent, some natural gifts when it came to that. Maybe they didn't know they had a natural gift at it until they actually got into it. Maybe they still don't know. I had some natural gifts for basketball. I didn't really realize that then. As I slowly grew into my body and grew into my confidence and my skills, I could see I had some natural abilities for the game, but they weren't so obvious at the beginning. But how did they even find out? It's because they kept trying. They kept showing up. They kept doing it over and over and over again. And eventually, it started to show as a skill, and eventually it became something that was valuable to them and maybe even valuable to other people. So the question for you is, how often are you showing up? Because that's half the game, just showing up. Point number two. Today's topic is the three aspects of winning. Point number two. 40% of it, so I told you 50%, right? So now we got 50% left in order for you to win. Here's another 40% chunk, is integrity and character. Definition of integrity is the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. In other words, moral uprightness. The definition of character is strength and originality in a person's nature. In other words, being about what you say you're about, knowing that you're being true to yourself. I'm giving you both of them there. Again, 40% of the game, so we know half the game is showing up. Another 40% of the game 
is having integrity and being of strong character, which means, and I'm giving you my definition here, being about what you say you're about. So you say you're going to do something, you say you're serious about something, you say this is who you are, you say this is what you want to do, and you're actually living out all the stuff you talk about. That's part of it. And the other part of it is knowing that you're being true to yourself. So you're not lying to yourself. You're not saying something to the world and then telling yourself something different or telling yourself one thing and then doing something opposite of that. That's what integrity and character mean. I heard a person once say that success, this word success that we all seem to be chasing, success is not about how much money you have or your list of accomplishments or any other numbers or any other measurables or even how you compare it to anyone else out there. It's not, success is not about that. It's about how happy you are with yourself when you're alone by yourself. I really like that definition. I really like that explanation of success. I'm going to say it one more time. This guy says success is not about your anything measurable, how much money you have, your list of accomplishments, how many followers you got, how many products you sold last week, how much revenue your company did last quarter. Success is not about any of those things, how many trophies you have and any of that. Success is about how happy you are with you when it's just you. And I would say that's what integrity is. Integrity is you being able to look in the mirror and know that you're upholding all the things that you think about yourself, all the things that you say about yourself, you're actually living them out. That's what integrity is. Character is about doing the right thing, even when it would be easier, faster, simpler, cheaper to do the wrong thing. And how you judge yourself on those decisions. Integrity and character. Because none of us is qualified to judge anybody else. None of us is qualified to judge because none of us is without flaws. None of us is without mistakes. So to point out another person's mistakes, well, we could be spending that same time and energy pointing out our own. Character is about how you're judging you based on the actions that you've taken, based on you knowing 100% of what's been going on in your life. You're the only person who knows 100% of everything. All right, you know when you've taken a shortcut, you know when you're bullshitting yourself, you know when you're lying to yourself, you know when you're not keeping it real with yourself, you know when you tell yourself something but you're not actually following through. Nobody else may know, but you know. When you're laying in bed at night, you know when you're not following through with you. Character is how much, how willing are you to look at yourself in the mirror and know that you've kept your own word to you. That's what character is about. And integrity is how happy are you with yourself? Not with how other people see you or what other people think about you or what you think other people think about you or what you think other people want you to think about you. It's how you feel about you when there's nobody else around. And if you're not keeping it real with yourself, if you're lying to yourself, if you're telling yourself things but not following through on them, if you say that you're about something but you're not actually living it, if those are the things that you're doing, then your integrity is in question. And again, not by anybody else, by yourself and your character. Like you may not be so happy with yourself because you know that you're not living as the type of person that you know you want to be. 40% of the game, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to winning in life is integrity and character. Notice that this right here, integrity and character, has nothing to do with other people. This is about you yourself. Because if you are not being true to your character and you're not, you're not the type of person with yourself that you present yourself to be to the world, then it's impossible for you to win. You could have trophies and still be a loser. You could have all the money and still be broke. You could be rich in followers and friends and fame and still be emotionally, mentally, spiritually poor because your integrity and your character are not where they need to be. John Wooden, legendary UCLA basketball coach, won, I believe it was 12 NCAA championships, winning his coach in championship-wise in college basketball history. It was noted that he would tell his players before every game, because UCLA was a very talented team. They had very good players. They obviously won a lot of championships, as I just explained. He would tell his players before every game, he said, look, we, Actually, I don't know if he said this part, but let me tell you the part he said, then I'll get my part. He would tell his players that the only way they knew whether they were winners or not at the end of every game was not the numbers on the, not by the numbers on the scoreboard. 
It was if each one of them could look themselves in the mirror after the game and know that they gave their absolute best to help the team be successful. That's the only way they knew if they were winners or not. It was not about the numbers on the scoreboard. Now, here's now I'm out of what John Wooden said. Now, here's what I say about that. I believe that one of the reasons John Wooden would say something like that is because he knew that he had a superior basketball team. He knew he had the best players. He knew he had the most talent. He knew that skill-wise, talent-wise, his team could probably beat other teams without even giving their best effort simply because they were better basketball players. It's just the way that it works. So John Wooden was smart enough to help his players become their best by taking the emphasis off of we're just going to beat the other teams because they were better than a whole lot of the teams they were playing against. So how am I going to make sure I'm making I'm helping each one of my players maximize their personal potential is the question that I think John Wooden asked himself. And the answer was, I got to make sure these guys are not measuring themselves by who they defeat because we're going to beat people by default because we're just so good. So how about your integrity? Because your integrity is not about whether you beat the next guy. Your integrity is about what did you do based on what you told yourself you were going to do or what you believe you're capable of doing or what you know you're capable of doing. Have you lived up to that? Because, listen, if, you, if I go play basketball against most of the people who are listening to me right now, I'm probably going to win because I just have more skill. I got more talent, more experience than you. But did I get my best possible effort? That's a lot different than did I beat you and you don't even play basketball. What did I prove by beating somebody who doesn't play? But now if I give my best effort and I make myself better that day, now I did something. Now I can say I'm living in my own integrity. I can say that I'm happy with my character because I know I am the same person internally that I present myself to be externally. This is 40% of the game in life, ladies and gentlemen. And I want you to really, really pay attention to the fact, I'm going to emphasize it again, that this 40% chunk of competition of winning in life has nothing to do with other people, has nothing to do with the other businesses in the town, nothing to do with the other athletes playing your sport, nothing to do with anyone else who may be in the race against you and whatever you happen to be doing. This is all on you. Point number three. Today's topic is the three aspects of winning in life. The last 10%, so 50% of it showing up, 40% of it is your integrity and your character. The last 50%, that's the dog fight. The dog fight, I'll explain. Assuming that you have properly handled the first two, meaning you're showing up every day, you are living in integrity, you are of strong character. This last part, this is the competition of skills, resources, performance, like who's better? It just comes down to that. Who is better? Who can make more shots? Who can sell more products? Who can give the better presentation? Who can get in touch with more people? Who can do more of X? than the other person. All right, who gets the lower score in golf? Who can get the higher score in bowling? Who can score more points in a basketball game? This is the dog fight. This is the part that most people think is 90% of the game. is only 10% of the game. The skill battle, the performance battle, the do I, can I get, can I achieve more of X than you? This is only 10% of the game. Here's where and why you could do everything right and still lose. The resources, performance, who's better battle. Where sometimes it could just be the luck of the draw. Sometimes you could show up every day, you could be in integrity, you could have uh, strong morals and strong character, but you could still lose. Because sometimes the other person just has more skill than you, more resources than you, they perform better than you that day, they were just straight up better than you. Maybe they're better than you overall, maybe they were just better than you that one time. But you can still lose in this situation. Whereas sometimes, I just said, it can be the luck of the draw. But I want you to understand something. I want you to understand something about this right here. Because a lot of people will hear this and they'll say, oh, well, shit, then I could do everything right and still lose. What's the point of doing any of the other things that you talked about, Dre? If I could do everything right and still lose this 10%, that's the dog fight. This is, again, just a skill battle. I want you to understand that this battle only exists when you are competing against other people who have also mastered that 90% that we talked about in points one and two. Let me go a little bit deeper on that. See, the 10% battle of skill and resources and performance, you are only in this battle against other people who have also jumped over hurdles number one and hurdle number two. In college, again, the professor says, 
you get to see just by showing up to every class, 40% of the people in the room are not even in the competition for that seat because they're not showing up to every class. And the John Wooden says, you only are a champion. You're only a winner if you give your best effort every game, regardless of how many games we win or lose, regardless of how many points you have, regardless of the score on the scoreboard. Another, well, let me just, let's just use the actual numbers. 50% of the people in the class ain't getting a C because they didn't show up to every class. And another 40% are not getting, are not going to be winners because they are not of strong integrity and not of strong, strong moral character. So you only got 10% of people left. So the 10% who made it through all of that, those are the people that you're competing against. Now, you're only competing against other people who are master points one and two. And here's the secret. Most people never get to this final 10%. I mean, it just makes sense. This is only 10% of the population, right? 90% of the population, you will never see an adult fight. I hope people are really listening. I hope you're really listening closely to what I'm saying here. 90% of the time, when you think your competition is who has more skills, resources, or who's the better performer, it's not. That's not the competition you're actually in. The competition is showing up and being of integrity and character. 10%, only 10% of people are competing on skill. So if you lose at this level, if you find that you have showed up all the time, you're of strong integrity, strong character, but then you lose, I want you to understand that you lost to another 10 percenter. You lost to somebody in the 10%, which means even in defeat, you are better than damn near everybody else. So this is the person, the athlete who loses the gold medal match at the Olympics and wins the silver medal. Now, you might not feel so great because you only won a silver medal or quote, only close quote, won a silver medal. But you are better than everybody else in the world except one person. All right. You came in. I watched the, you know, I will watch the 100 meter dash gold medal race at the Olympics. Right. And it's eight people racing. And the person who comes in last usually seems so far behind the other, the, at least the person who won, right? It's like such a big gap. It seems like such a big gap between the person who comes in first and the person who comes in last in a gold medal race. But the person who came in last in the gold medal race at the Olympics is faster than everybody in the world except seven other people. Right? They're faster than everybody else out there. So they lost, but they lost in a battle of 10 percenters. They didn't lose in a battle of the whole world. They lost in a battle of the 10 percenters. So this is the NBA player who goes to the NBA finals and loses in the finals. But listen, you lost in the NBA finals. <laughs> All right. You lost to the only other team in the world that's better than you. You're better than every other team out there. So somebody, a basketball player losing NBA finals and you got fans on social media talking shit to and about that player. But listen, that player lost in the NBA finals. OK, you you play at the YMCA. He's playing in the NBA. All right. It's not a comparison. So losing in the NBA finals means you lost a 10 percent battle against people who did all the other things. The person who on the sideline who didn't handle points one and two are they not qualified the same thing to you. When you're in the top 10 percent or you're not in competition with everybody, even though everybody may be watching, even though everybody may have an opinion, everybody can say something. Everybody ain't qualified to be in a competition, though. That's why most people are watching you. Next time you go to a sporting event or a concert or any big event, Note how many people are on the stage versus how many people are in the crowd. It's usually a huge difference, right? Well, and it's a metaphor for the fact that in any competition in life, 90% of it has nothing to do with actual skill, talent, performance, abilities. Is the other things. And other things that seem so simple, seem so basic, seem so easy. And guess what? They are. You know why? Why do they make up the 90% when they're so simple, basic, and easy? Because most people don't adhere to them. They think they're too good for them. They think they can overlook those. They think what they need to focus on is the last 10%, but most people never even qualify to compete on the 10%. Let's recap today's class, which is the three aspects of winning. If you're going to play the game in life, and we all are playing some game, you probably want to win. The winners get remembered. The history books are written by the winners, so let's break down what you need to win. Number one. 50% of the game is showing up, ladies and gentlemen. Be in the room. In college, the professor says, look, you'll get a 70. You'll get a C in this class if you just show up to every class. Half the students don't even take it. Many professors say half your grades just showing up, and people don't do it. In high school, my coach said practices every day. You miss a practice, you're off the team. Somebody said, well, what if you get sick? Coach said, don't get sick. Guess how many people got sick? Zero. Kobe said his 10- and 12-year-old basketball playing girls, we were practicing every single day. The question for you is, 
How often do you do your thing? Do you even know? Do you have a plan? Do you have a schedule? Are you showing up consistently? Does everybody else know that they can expect that from you? Why do people run marathons? Besides the professional runners, which are maybe 10 people in the whole race in most marathons, not all of them, but most of them, the reason why everybody else is running is because we want to prove that we can finish what we start, that we can show up somewhere and complete something. That is 50% of the game showing up. Point number two. 40% of the game is integrity and character. Definition of integrity, the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. Definition of character, strength and originality in a person's nature. In other words, being about what you say you're about and knowing that you're being true to yourself. I heard a person say that success is not about money or a list of accomplishments. It's about how happy you are with you when you are alone with you. That's what integrity is. Character is about doing the right thing even when it would be easier or faster or cheaper or simpler to do the wrong thing and how you judge yourself on it because nobody else is qualified to judge you just like you're not qualified to judge anybody else how do you judge yourself based on the action that you've taken based on the morals and principles and the, the the principles that you decided to stand on or if you're standing on any at all point number three ten percent of the game is the dog fight all right this is where assuming you've handled properly the first two because you're not qualified for this part until you handle one and two this is where you're in a battle of skills resources and performance and talent and this is just finding out who's better here's where you could do everything right and still lose because somebody's just better than you sometimes it could just be the luck of the draw but understand that this battle only exists when you're going against other people who have also handled the 90 percent they're supposed to handle they master the other 90 percent of the game just like you most people never do this so if you find yourself losing in a skill competition or a talent or performance competition understand that you're losing to people who are in the top 10 percent and you're still better than 90 percent of the world even though you lost this is the player who loses in the NBA Finals, okay? All right, they lost to somebody in the NBA. You're going to lose to somebody at the YMCA. You're losing to the best of the best. This is the Olympic runner who comes in last in the gold medal 100-meter dash. All right, you're still faster than everybody in the world except seven people, okay? So you're competing against the 10% at that level. Now, you may not take so much solace in that, but that's what it is. I'm just giving it to you as it is, and you can decide what you want to do with it. Or you can read my book, Work On Your Game, and I'll tell you what to do with it. Work on your game. Dre all day.